very good afternoon to all of you and thank you Mr. Chair Lady. Um, our panelists, uh, Taji Rashid and uh, the rest is, uh, will join us later on. Okay. Um, I'll be having, being uh, the last speaker and more so after uh, lunch uh, session, a bit tough for me. <laughs> Whereby uh, I can see uh, there's still a uh, uh, few place, uh, seats will be available, but I hope they will come in soon. Okay, and also I hope with um, my presentation you will not fall asleep. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'll move to um, what I will be talking about. I'll start with the. A uh, bit overview on Bank Islam Trust, um, uh, whereby I am wo currently working with. Uh, a bit introduction of uh, our company, and then on section two, later on I will touch on the uh, wealth management uh, and the, uh, the available uh, structures, wealth management structures available in Lab One. And being the last uh, speaker as well. Um, have their own advantages, okay? This is why, because all the panelists have spoken about it, okay? For instance, <laughs> for instance, for the Lab One, Lab One legal framework, uh, our colleague Mr. Uh, Jeffrey has already touched about it. So, what, whenever I feel this topic will has been touched, I will skip into and zoom into the Lab One Foundation, okay? Let's move to. Lab One Bank, Bank Sun Trust Company. Um, we has been incorporated in uh, 7 February 1997 and uh, formerly known as BIMB International Islamic Trust Lab One Srembahat. Initially, um, we started as an uh, Srembahat entity and later on with the move of uh, uh, certain uh, uh, requirement and that, so we have we uh, our establishment is now under the Lab One Companies Act 1990. Initially, as well, we started with an all uh, just a small unit supporting Bank Islam Lab One Limited. If you know, um, uh, initially Bank Islam uh, quite famous in Lab One. Uh, that's where our function initially started with. Uh, we are with a wholly owned subsidy of Bank Islam. So, mean to say. Uh, our parent company is Bank Islam, and in January 2005, we paid a capital of almost 250,000. Uh, uh, so, BTL focuses on offering of Sharia compliance products and services. Okay, this is the corporate structure of uh, Bank Islam, uh, Bank Islam, and Bank Islam Trust itself. So, we are in as in uh, appeared in the. Uh, slides is a hundred percent wholly owned by B Bank Islam. Okay, uh, currently we have uh, only two board of directors. Uh, the chairman is Cik Zahari bin Cik Zahari Muhammad Zain bin Idris, uh, who is also an independent uh, board of directors for Bank Islam, and the other one is uh, Puan Maria Mat Said, who's the director, uh, who's also a director of, of uh, is a uh, Secretarial, head of secretarial in Bank, Is in Bank Islam. Okay, um, our services. Okay, before that, uh, being a, a trust company, being a trust company, um, there's almost there's always a perception that we are. Of we are the trust uh, mutual fund is a trust. Uh, trust, uh, apa? You need trust company. That's uh, the almost perception. Initially, as as I started working with Bank Islam, uh, Rumaiti, where are you right now? I said, um, Bank Islam Trust Company. Oh, I already invested. I already invested with my friends. Oh, I they thought that I'm going to, I mean, ask them to 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 invest in unit trust, uh, uh per unit trust. So that's the common uh, perception of a lab, lab one trust company. 
Under Section 2 of uh, Labuan Financial Services and Securities Act, it defines a uh, Labuan Trust Company as a person licensed to carry on a trust company business under Section 61 and 71. And being a Labuan Trust Company, an officer, uh, they must be an, a trust officer. So trust officer under Section 2 of the Labuan Financial Services and Securities Act means an officer of a Labuan Trust Company approved and designated as a trust officer by the authority. So meaning to say before I can be a cup, we can become a trust uh, trust officer. I have to sit for an interview, and thereafter, uh, uh, I, sit to, I have to sit for an examination, and there uh, before after that, uh, to sit for inter interview with uh, Labuan FSA. Okay, um, what does it mean by Labuan Trust Company? A uh, trust company business. It means that establishing or using a shared transfer office or share registration office administering, managing, or otherwise dealing with property as an agent, legal personal representative or trustee, whether by a servant or agent or otherwise, maintaining an agent for the purpose of soliciting or procuring business, whether or not, in, in, whether or not the agent is continuously resident in Labuan, maintaining an office, agency, or branch, whether or not that office, agency, or branch is also used for any purpose by another entity. Uh, the provision of management, management and accounting services to or directors, secretaries and registered office for Labuan Companies Incorporated or registered under the Labuan Companies Act 1990 and foreign Labuan Companies registered under the Labuan, under the, under the Act. So that's basically means by the uh, trust company, uh, trust company business. Okay, our services, uh, as I said, as I mentioned to you, is a, a formation, registration, and management of Labuan Company, which includes the provision of company secretarial, nominee, and accounting services. Apart from that, we also provide for provision of a trustee and custodian services for investment funds and Islamic bonds to cook. If you know, um, initially uh, through Labuan, uh, at that point of time. Um, uh, Gatri has issued a first global suku, so we are the trustee uh, for the for the suku. Um, advisory services, which includes the application to the relevant authorities vis-à-vis -vis the licenses and approvals for the establishment of mutual funds, funds management company, insurance takaful and insurance takaful related business banks and leasing business. This is all the. Um, uh, entity business labuan entities which needs uh, or uh, uh, their activities falls under financial services that uh, it, that needs the labuan FSA uh, to, uh, approval and uh, approval and licenses. So we are the one the parties that leads uh, that yes with the labuan FSA or the, the authority. Wealth management services with uh, via on Islamic trust labuan foundation private funds and investment holding companies. And also, we, are, we can provide uh, comprehensive Islamic will writing services, which includes the appointment as an executor, custodian, and estate and administrator. So this is the key personnel uh, profiles. Um, I've been with uh, Bank Islam Trust for uh, seven years. Currently, we have an officers, uh, make, uh, marketing office in KL. And my colleague, uh, she's here, Mas Dayana, He's an uh, operations manager uh, of BTL. Uh, he, she, she also has um, eight years experience working with BTL. Okay, wealth management, okay. As um, Jeff, Mr. Jeffrey has uh, touched on this, so I'll just skip on this uh, legal framework. Okay, um, basically in Labuan generally, uh, there are uh, three uh, Wealth management structures in Labuan. They are trust, uh, private trust company, and Labuan Foundation. If you can um, have listened to um, Dr. Aziz just now attentively, you will know um, what, uh, in, and if before that, Tuan Haji Rashid has spoken about the instruments uh, of uh, legacy planning. He talked about, he talked about um, uh, trust, he talks about uh, uh, other instrument as well, and 
in in Labuan, we have also trust and also um, uh, uh, trust and Lab uh, Labuan Foundation. The trust is administered under the Labuan Trust Act 1990. Uh, under this act, we have uh, all sort of uh, trust, charitable trust, and with the improved uh, enhancement made by in 2010, they have included Labuan Special Trust. Okay, as for the private trust company, it provides under the Labuan Financial Services and Securities Act uh, 19, uh, uh, 2010, whereby um, uh, it is a company that, under, that undertake a specific purpose uh, of act, acting as a, a trustee for the special trust, or for the special trust. So meaning to say, if let's say, um, uh, the trust can only administer and execute uh, being a role as trustee for the specific trust only. And it cannot be of, offer the services to other uh, trusts. Okay, and alternative to trust, uh, in 2010, uh, Labuan, we have currently Labuan Foundations. Okay, a little bit introduction to on of Labuan Foundation is managed by Foundation Council or similar body and set up following a declaration, registration or incorporation by on behalf of founder. It designed to hold, administer and distribute foundation endowment for the benefit of beneficiaries or for a purpose according to the requirements of the charter and article of foundation. The constituent documents for Labuan Foundation is both charter and articles of foundation. Foundation itself is a, is a separate legal entity compared to, uh, to a trust. Um, liability of a foundation is limited to the value of, the, of its net asset and it allows for re of foundation in or out of Labuan. For instance, um, we have um, a foundation from other jurisdictions, for instance, uh, Jersey, for instance, they want to have the um, enjoy the uh, enjoy the 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 relaxation and a certain uh, provision in Labuan. They have they can migrate to Labuan, and vice versa. If, if Labuan foundation want to migrate to or redomicile to other jurisdictions, they also can. Uh, uh, provides the for, uh, provision in the Labuan Foundation as well. Whereas the uh, Labuan Foundation is dissolved and there remains some property after its dissolution, those properties shall be the property of the beneficiaries. And uh, one of the speciality for Labuan uh, is that uh, under Labuan, we have a separate uh, framework for uh, uh, Islamic, all the Islamic uh, acts and uh, entities uh, is uh, found under the Labuan, uh, Labuan Islamic Financial Services and Securities. So for, for, uh, for Labuan Islam, Lab Islamic Foundation, uh, as long as it subscribes to Sharia principle and appoints a Sharia advisor, it, it can be considered to be an uh, Islamic uh, foundation. The objective of establish, establishing a foundation usually uh, associated with wealth management and protection of assets. Therefore, the establishment of foundation can be used for all lawful perm permissible activities, including but not too limited, but not limited to investment, holding of companies, estate planning, preserving uh, family wealth and succession planning. Generally, there are three types of foundation. Uh, private beneficiary foundation. It is set up by individual, a family, or group of individual for specific beneficiaries. Um, if, let's say, uh, under this, um, uh, what we call is uh, Islamic foundation, if uh, uh, we talk about a private wakaf, it can be set up or registered under the uh, Labuan Foundation. The second one is non charitable foundation or private purpose foundation. It is uh, uh, for private purposes, ex example, education research, not generally, not generally to solicit fund from uh, the public. So being uh, non-charitable, 
uh, not generate, they can't uh, solicit funds from the, from the public. Example of non-charitable foundation is like Eric Slam Foundation, Rockefeller and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The third one is charitable foundation, a non-profit entity. The fund is sources from public don donation, meaning to say they can solicit funds from the public. For charitable foundation, um, there are specific guidelines uh, applicable to them. There are certain requirements that they have to meet to, in order for them to set up the charitable foundation. The purpose is usually to promote public benefits or other purposes which are generally beneficial for the community. For example, in Labuan, we have uh, Ping Ribbon Foundation, which um, uh, uh, quite considered a, a successful foundation in Labuan. Okay, uh, a little bit on a snapshot on the Labuan Foundation Act 2010. As regards to the capacity of uh, Labuan Foundation, as I mentioned to, to, you, uh, to all of you just now, is under Section 50. It is a uh, body, corporate, and may sue and be sued in its corporate name. Uh, a founder of Labuan Foundation can be a resident or non-resident. Um, and a property of Labuan, uh, Labuan Foundation cannot include Malaysian property except with prior approval from the author authority, which is the Labuan FSA, or uh, Labuan Foundation itself is a charitable. As regards to the, to the beneficiaries under Section 6, uh, Subsection 1, a resident, it can be a resident or a non-resident, and income derived from Malaysian property falls under ITA 1967, and whereby uh, income derived from non-Malaysian property falls under the Labuan Business Activity Tax Act. The purpose and objective of the Labuan Foundation, uh, uh, the main purpose of Labuan Foundation shall be the management of its property, and Labuan Foundation may also include other lawful uh, objects. As regards to the management, founder act as an officer of Labuan Foundation, and it provide it provide for the appointment of the council to manage the Labuan Foundation. <clears throat> okay, we will look uh, into the features of a Labuan Foundation. As I said just now, the constituent documents for Labuan Foundation is charter and article of the foundation. The charter is the main constituent document of the Labuan Foundation. It set out the parameters, objective, and purposes, purpose of the establishment of the Labuan Foundation. Labuan Foundation is established which, when the founder subscribe his or her name to the charter of Labuan Foundation. Once the charter has been duly signed by the, by the founder and filed with Labuan FSA, the issuance of certificate of registration issued by Labuan FSA is a conclusive evidence that Labuan Foundation is registered with the authority. As regards to the initial endowment of the asset, the setting up of a Labuan Foundation does not require a huge amount of initial property or asset injection before it can be operational. It can be as low as US dollar, US one dollar. Okay. However, any property of a Labuan Foundation must not include any Malaysian property unless an approval, prior approval, is obtained from the authority or the Labuan Foundation is a foundation that meant for charitable purposes. As regards to the applicability of the tax, as I shared with you just now, all the uh, income derived from the Malaysian property will be taxed under the Labuan uh, um, uh, ITA, whereby uh, any property which is not Malaysian property will be subject to the uh, Labuan Business Activity Act. Dissolutions. A Labuan Foundation can be dissolved upon the passing of a resolution by the officer on the basis that the Labuan Foundation is established for a definite period, and that period and that period expires. Number one, the purpose of the Labuan Foundation is fulfilled or becomes incapable of fulfillment. That's the situation number two, and the charter requires such a resolution. Okay, governing, we move to governing structures of Labuan Foundation. Um, as um, 
a foundation, we need to have a founder. A founder may be an individual or a corporation, Malaysian resident or non-resident. A founder is a person who set up or who established the foundation by subscribing his or her name to the charter. The secretary, uh, every Labuan foundation must have a secretary who shall be a company registered as a Labuan Trust Company. So one of uh, the uh, secretary is uh, Bank Islam Trust and we have uh, other trust company uh, as well uh, in Labuan. We have close to um, 40, if I'm not mistaken, all trust company in Labuan right now. The function of uh, secretary acts as the service provider to the Labuan Foundation and perform all secretary functions, including filing and lodging of document with, with Labuan FSA. The council members are responsible to ensure the compliance of Labuan Foundation and its officer parallel to the terms of the Foundation Charter and the article. The council member may be a natural person or a corporation and appointed before and after the registration of the Labuan Foundation. A founder or beneficiary who is not an officer uh, of a Labuan Foundation may be appointed as a council member. And the officers, the role of uh, an officer of the Labuan Foundation is to administer of the Labuan Foundation in such a manner that it achieves its objectives and purposes, including the management of the foundation investment and other role as stated in charter and article of the foundation being the constituent documents for the Labuan Foundation. The officer may be a natural person or a corporation a founder or a beneficiary who is not a council member may be appointed as the officer of the Labuan Foundation. Supervisory person, Labuan Foundation may appoint a supervisory person subject to, ter to the term of the charter. The function of supervisory person is to supervise, monitor or safeguard all the activities and management of the foundation. This supervisory, uh, supervisory person, if let's say uh, if, uh, is a Lab Islamic Labuan Foundation, uh, have uh, being a lab Islamic foundation, they have to appoint a Sharia advisor. So Sharia advisor uh, can also becomes the uh, seats as the supervisory person. Beneficiaries are the person who will benefit from the foundation. The beneficiary may be a resident or non-resident of Malaysia, which includes individual, corporate entities, or charities who have vested interest in the asset of foundation. Beneficiaries, beneficiaries have no rights to the foundation, neither owed any fiduciary duty unless it is stated in the charter or articles. A beneficiary then who was a vested in, who has a vested interest in the property of Labuan Foundation have the right to request from the council members, supervisory person or officers of Labuan Foundation and information pertaining to his interest and shall, intent, shall entitle to receive Upon request, information for Labuan Foundation. This is a, a, a right uh, of beneficiary if they stated in the uh, Labuan uh, in the charter. Okay, this is uh, internal structure of uh, of a foundation. I have shared with you um, uh, this in terms of um, um, uh, the structure in uh, in info in info and brief uh, slides lah. Okay, requires requirements to establish a Labuan Foundation. Every Labuan Foundation must be registered with Labuan FSA, unlike the uh, trust whereby registration of a trust is an op op option. Application for regis registration must be made by a licensed trust company, i.e. Uh, through the uh, trust company, uh, secretary of a foundation to Labuan FSA. Upon filing the charter to Labuan FSA, the FSA will generally register the, inst the intended Labuan Foundation uh, within two or three days. This is prior to the um, electronic system that we are using uh, filing with Labuan FSA. After uh, we, all the trust companies uh, recently uh, uh, using the coral system, whereby this um, certificate of uh, uh, foundation is now uh, issued uh, according to the charter of Labuan FSA, it will take about two, two to three weeks. Okay, um, Form 8 
is the application of registration what are the required or include uh, information that includes the in the foundation such as the foundation's name the date of the charter the purposes the purpose and object of the foundation the date of the foundation articles if any and uh, the name and address of the secretary the address of the registered office of the labuan foundation in terms of the uh, labuan foundation registered address is normally the address of the relevant trust company if uh, the duration of the labuan foundation if any an original copy of the charter uh, these are among the information are required doc document that needs to be lodged with the uh, labuan fsa on top of the uh, registration uh, there's also form 9 uh, that is declaration by, by the Labuan Trust Company as a secretary. Okay, I will we'll move to the uh, step. Sorry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Ringgit Malaysia and also in US dollar, but normally in this uh, guideline and all that is in, in Ringgit Malaysia. It can be, it can be. Okay. Uh, currently in Labuan, we can uh, open, uh, because the, the registration of these, uh, even though for the company, uh, the Labuan entities, we do it in, in through online. So we will open an account with Labuan F, uh, uh, HSBC, whereby the Labuan FSA will deduct uh, automatically when we registered the, the lab yeah. I know that, but I mean the amount. So far it's a flat amount. Okay. Yeah. And the, the Correct. Yeah. Up, okay. I mean, before they take up the shares mm -hmm. in the company, or uh, you know, if that means, how do you go about getting approval? Okay, um, what we have did, uh, we, we have done before. Uh, we before we setting up this uh, uh, this uh, foundation or trust whatsoever, we will write uh, to Lab One, to Lab One FSA, stating what are the uh, related parties and. Uh, or who are the who are the parties involved and what are the assets of the uh, trust or foundation? Once we uh, put in writing and submit to Labuan FSA, FSA, Labuan FSA will give their 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 approval or uh, approval. Then means you are saying that all this need to be done before hmm. you even uh, form the uh, foundation. Yeah. Yeah. And if in the event you do have it, mm -hmm. do you need again to go back for approval for subsequent? Uh, properties okay um what we have done before uh we started with registration of the lab one uh, the lab one foundation using the uh the nominal value of the lab one foundation which which is is us dollar uh us one dollar so if let's say uh, the lab one foundation foundation thereafter want to end out certain properties into the lab one foundation then we will liaise with the Labuan Foundation, uh, for instance, the share and whatsoever, we will uh, liaise with the Labuan, Labuan, Labuan FSA. Okay, uh, maybe after the presentation, we will, we will apa, get back to, to you this. Okay, um, there's uh, three steps of, uh, of forming a lab one or register a lab one foundation. Uh, step one is uh, appointment of registered lab one trust company. Step two, uh, establishment of the lab one foundation. And step three, the submissions and registration of the lab one foundation. Okay, uh, as regards to step one, appointment of registered lab one trust company, the founder or the relevant uh, founder, be it resident or non-resident, will submit, will have to submit the application uh, form with us, okay, and then uh, on our side, Bank Islam Trust, we will do the uh, and to perform the relevant KYC and due diligence process. And once uh, all are in order, registr registration of Labuan Foundation 
uh, will be submit to Labuan FSA through the uh, the coral system, uh, uh, including submission forms, constituent documents, and other documents together with the payable uh, of uh, payable to Labuan FSA. Once um, uh, we have uh, filed in the relevant documents, uh, issuance of certificate of reg uh, registration by Labuan FSA will take now will take uh, uh, two three weeks lah. Then uh, it's a conclusive evidence once uh, the Labuan Foundation have uh, issued the Labuan Foundation uh, certif uh, certificate. The founder is required to appoint a registered trust company in Labuan, and our role is to be, uh, become a secretary to the Labuan Foundation. Um, Bank Islam is one of the Bank Islam Trust is one of the uh, registered trust company in Labuan. As I mentioned just now, our role is an, a slide and an agent for incorporating companies, provide registered office and resident secretary and perform the secretary duties of the Labuan companies. Okay, establishment of Labuan Foundation, um, uh, sub, the, the founder will subscribe his name to the, uh, his name to the charter of foundation. In section eight, uh, it will, uh, as I uh, uh, shared with you just now, the relevant information uh, like uh, the uh, the relevant parties, uh, registered address, and what's not, and complying requirement of Labuan Foundation Act, um, uh, the uh, the trust officer have to sign the uh, statutory declaration stating complying requirement of the Labuan Foundation, and thereafter Labuan FSA will issue the certificate of registration. Okay, it's basically the same, the process, uh, the charter Labuan FSA will. Uh, uh, will approve the uh, Labuan FSA and issue the uh, Labuan Foundation uh, certificate of registration uh, from from them. Okay, this is the uh, 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 the process and re required documents uh, between uh, conventional and uh, Islamic Foundation. Whereby, as for the uh, Labuan Islamic Labuan Foundation. We require uh, the 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 Labuan Foundation will have to appoint a uh, Sharia advisor who will advise on the uh, uh, Sharia compliance. Okay, once all the completed document has been obtained, the application for registration of Labuan Foundation can be submitted to Labuan FSA. Uh, the Labuan FSA will then issue a certificate of registration once the proposed Labuan Foundation has been approved and registered. Okay, I'll touch uh, a little bit um, on the advantages and benefits of a Labuan Foundation. In perpetuity, Labuan Foundation exists in, in perpetuity as there is no period rules in the Labuan Foundations Act 2010, which uh, provide continuity of the foundation at the discretion of the founder. As you can uh, um, heard from uh, Dr. Aziz just now, uh, Labuan has their own set setback so among uh, the advantages uh, Labuan Foundation has over the trust is in perpetuity. Reservation of powers, a key traction to Labuan Foundation Act that is that it provides reserve powers to the founder, providing the founder more control compared to a settler of a trust. Additionally, since a founder may also become a council member, he may further direct and manage the foundation asset as been shared by Dr. Um, as is just now. Confidentiality, all aspects of the Labuan Foundation is kept confidential except for the charter. Uh, there is no statutory, statutory requirement for an audit unless ordered by the court. Um, as I mentioned just now, there's no minimum capital requirement uh, to register Labuan Foundation. Uh, Redo my style, as I shared with you just now, uh, in and out, uh, the Labuan Foundation can be redo my style to other jurisdictions or uh, from other jurisdictions can be redomicile to Labuan as well. Um, being a Labuan Foundation is a separate legal entity and a corporate entity. All liabil liabilities remain corporate liabilities of the foundation. Okay, uh, guidelines and procedure of Labuan Foundation. Um, this is actually taken by uh, or extract from the uh, guidelines applicable to Labuan Foundation. Okay, the governing law is Labuan Foundation Act 2010, 
as for the Islamic Labuan Islamic Foundation uh, the applicable act will be uh, Labuan Islamic Financial Services and Securities and uh, on top of that all uh, general application of uh, anti money laundering and anti terrorism financing act also applies and for the permitted purpose it shall be for uh, the management of its property and may include other purposes which is not unlawful immoral or contrary to the public policy and such permitted uh, permitted purpose may be charitable or non charitable okay uh, what are the um, uh, includes in the Labuan uh, Charter. Uh, first one is name of the proposed foundation, name and address of the founder, purpose and object of the foundation, ident identification of the beneficiaries, name and address of secretary to the foundation, and duration of the foundation. Um, apart from that, uh, this all these um, points will be. Uh, taken care or drafted in the uh, you can find it in, in the uh, charter of uh, for, uh, for, uh, charter of Labuan Foundation uh, uh, that will include reservation of rights and powers amendment of charter articles of foundation if, en if any additional or removal of beneficiaries appointment of council council members or supervisory person as regard as it uh, provides for an appointment it also provides for the removal tenure of office uh, of the officers and approved auditors and regulation of the supervisory person. Okay, um, property for Labuan Foundation, uh, endowment of a property uh, of asset, it includes corporeal or incorporeal, movable or immovable, and also tangible or intangible. Uh, legal doc documents, uh, document includes the um, all the bank check, mon uh, money orders, shares, securities, bond, letter of credits, bank draft, and also electronic or digital, and e eviden evidencing from title of uh, title or interest. As I said just now, uh, it can include Malaysian or non-Malaysian property, but must uh, meet the purpose of object stated in the charter. An endowment of property into Labuan Islamic Foundation could be done through Hibah and Hadiah. The SSC, Supervisory Council, Sharia Council of um, uh, Labuan FSA, has also issued a resolution on um, uh, a certain way of transfer of uh, asset through um, Hiba or Hadiah, whereby it will be absolute if, let's say, they fulfill certain requirements. Okay, endowment of a Malaysian property, all Labuan non-charitable furniture must seek an approval from Labuan FSA and uh, obtain approval including consent letter from the level relevant authority if let's say uh, uh, a certain uh, involved with landed property, uh, land office, bank negara, CCM within 16 days from the registration date. It shall be free from encumbrances and obtained through lawful means and require a submit a half yearly report to Labuan FSA. This will be done uh, through the uh, Labuan Trust Company. Okay, this is a special uh, requirement under Labuan Charitable Foundation. Uh, I intend not to go for this as um, the the apa, the topic for today is more on the legacy, whereby the Labuan Charitable Foundation is more on the charitable uh, objective then. I think uh, with that, that's all my presentation. Uh, all questions and answers will be uh, answered during our uh, session later on. I think that's all.